Hi there my friends, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be working in acrylics. I'm working on a Windsor & Newton artist canvas board. It measures 14 inches by 10 inches. It does come pre-gessoed but I've added a couple more layers of gesso, sanded them down and then I've airbrushed carbon black and a warm umber, both by Liquitex, just to create a more smoother surface. I've then used um, a trace down, a white trace down, to trace down my guidelines from my initial sketch. Uh, this is done relatively easy and once you've got this car sort of carbon copy on your canvas, I can begin to paint. So I've popped the finished paint into the top right hand corner so you can see where I'm heading. Now what I do, this is how I work with acrylics is I like to get a monochrome base coat down first and what that means is I just work with Liquitex unbleached titanium white it's sort of a, a creamy color paint and I just lay down where I want details where I want the lightest lights and then I'll leave gaps or I'll water down the acrylic paint in areas where I want the darker elements but all of this is, is just applying simple guidelines to the canvas for me to then glaze acrylic colours over the top. And this complete painting was worked with Liquitex Basics and a few De La Rowney paints too. But mostly Liquitex Basics. I like them because they're quite transparent, quite translucent. So you can build up lots and lots of glazes and it's, it's hard to photograph really because you get a little bit of a, a glare but I did manage to get a photograph of the finished painting um, that will be left now for a couple of weeks and then I will varnish it I know a lot of artists like to use a high gloss varnish on their paintings but I prefer to uh, varnish with a matte varnish finish hope everybody's keeping well this is sped up so um, else it would be just so boring to watch because literally going in and just applying a lot of detail here just with a couple of acrylic brushes now I do have a question from a lady and she says how do I wash my brushes after using acrylic and I just to be honest just rinse them out in water um, if I'm using a really big brush to lay down a lot of um, acrylic paint yes the paint can move up towards the furrow of the brush I and mean, in which case I just use soapy water and, win and rinse that out after use straight the way after after use but the how I paint normally is I do keep the paint towards the um, the edge of the brush so it doesn't collect back up in the furrow end of the brush um, and that's when you can cause brushes to splay and things like that obviously if paint brushes do splay over time then I never get rid of them I never discard them they can always be used for something and there is a Masterson's um, or Masters uh, brush cleaner that I do use it's a soap in a little box and I've been able to revive most brushes but it's very rare very rare that um, any of my brushes reach that stage so here we go so we're just building up the layers now what I have done is I've taken my photograph um, that, I, that I'm working from one of my own photographs and I've um, edited it and I've made it black and white and it's much easier then to work a monochrome base layer working from black and white photo it's more tricky to do this from a photo that's already still in colour so moving onwards as you can see I'm working up a little bit at a time and I do tend to just flip from one area to another else it can get pretty laborious I know not everybody paints like this with acrylics but it's just a, how I enjoy painting with acrylics and I'm self-taught completely self-taught in all of my different mediums and this is just the route that I've found that works best for me so just building up the texture there there still is some texture on the uh, canvas board I haven't taken the, 
the texture away completely by building up um, a couple of layers of gesso and then airbrushing. If that's something that you'd like me to make a video of how I start from an initial canvas board, build up the layers of gesso and do the airbrushing for backgrounds, just drop a comment down below and I'll make a video about that when I start my next acrylic painting. I'm going to be working for Derwent for the next couple of weeks on a project so I'll try and fit something in in between uh, Derwent sessions I guess you could say. Wow so yes just building up the layers so going a little bit um, more opaque where I know the finished painting needs to be lighter and less opaque where I know the finished painting is going to be slightly darker and in some areas I could have gone a lot harsher with this white I'm saying white but it's unbleached titanium white so it is a creamy color it's looking white because it's going onto this dark board and obviously it is a little bit transparent it's not as opaque as running a piece of chalk across a board would be so some of the background colour is coming through the paint layers but that's fine it works it works well for for what I need it to do <clears throat> but yeah you I could have worked um, some stronger lights and you'll see that during the painting process I will glaze colours then I'll go back on top of the dried glazed colours and do this again not everywhere but in a lot of places and the more you go backwards and forwards between layering and glazing, layering and glazing, the more depth your finished painting will have. And when the painting is finished, it's really, as I was saying, it's hard to get a photograph that gives you that depth within all of the colour glazes. As the light goes through the different glazes, um, it bounces around and yeah, it gives a lot of depth and a lot of warmth in this piece. So I'm working um, on a table, on one of my tables in my studio doing this piece. So this is a, a t lent on a little um, stand, I guess you could say, at about 15 or 20 degrees. But working on something bigger, I'll then work upright at the easel. So this is the first of the glazes going on and this is the Liquitex Basics. They're lovely for glazing because they're so transparent and you'll see me dry in layers with hair dryer just to speed things up. Acrylic dries really quick anyway. The, the acrylics I use dry really quick anyway but if, if I need to speed them up even more then I'll just use the hair dryer and you can go straight on. That's the beauty of acrylics compared to oils. If I work with oils, I work with um, a mixing medium called liquid and that allows the layers to dry um, overnight. So they'll be touch dry the following day. So obviously you can't speed up the drying with a hairdryer <laughs> with oils because they're flammable. So, <laughs> but um, I could have done this in oils, but I just like the, the speed of working with acrylics. Although saying speed, it would, this was still quite a, a long process. I don't work all day on one piece. I'll just work for a couple of hours and then take a break and come back and work another couple of hours, take a break, come back and then build it up slowly like that. So it's very, um, watching this, it's very self-explanatory. I'm mixing, I've got a palette to the side. If you want to see the palette that I use, there is a video, I'll try and remember to link it below. There is a video on my website, I'm um, sorry, on my YouTube channel that does show which palette I, I use. It's a, a gray glass palette in a Masterson's uh, palette holder. And I can, put the paints in there, put the acrylic paints in into that, put them onto the glass palette, put a piece of uh, wet kitchen roll or tissue paper in the palette, pop the lid on and those paints will stay wet for weeks. 
I also have a fine mist sprayer to, to the side of me as well. And while I'm working, I'll occasionally just mist the paints just to keep them wet while I'm working and while the, the lid isn't on the palette. So going around the edges of the eye, just building up the shadows. And now I do have the photo, the reference photo I'm working from to my left hand side. I'm just using it on my phone. I've just got the um, photograph on my phone and it's back in colour. So I've deleted the edit that made it black and white. And now I'm working from a colour photograph once again. And that photograph is just guidance. I'm not going for hyper realism here. I want it to give it want to give the um, portrait my own spin, so to speak, the colours that I want to use, but it gives me a rough idea as I'm working. So adding some touches of yellow ochre and a greyish green in some areas. <clears throat> and highlights and low lights and mid-tones. The great thing is about doing the underpainting, a monochrome underpainting, is you now have a, a lot of a structure to work on. It makes life so much easier that you haven't got to think of, well you still have but not as much, but lights and darks um, as well as colour mixing. Um, it seems to narrow it down slightly so you're more interested now in colour values rather than contrast and all contrast is is how dark something is and how light something is and the contrast between the two because obviously as you can see in the finished painting I did want the light source to be coming in from the top left so I did know in my mind's eye I guess you could say uh, where I wanted the light coming from uh, hence where I wanted shadowed areas to be. Sorry about the hair popping into frame there. So the video is running at about 30 minutes, 33 minutes. So not a long one. But as I said, if you want me to create a video that takes you through canvas preparation and airbrushing, I have had a couple of people already ask about airbrushing, so I might as well throw everything together and put it in one video for you so if you're interested in that just leave a comment below hit like and subscribe if you haven't already it really helps the channel and the uh, elusive algorithms and if you have already subscribed thank you so much it really is appreciated so I'm just hovering over the canvas there so I can just make sure I'm not altering the size of that pupil too much um, towards the end of the painting, and that wasn't filmed, I actually popped the canvas up on the easel and I had altered the pupil on the, the, the lion's left pupil, the one, the eye that I'm working on now. I had slightly um, altered the size of the pupil, so I did go back in and uh, correct that. And that's the best thing about acrylics as well is once they're dry, as long as they haven't been varnished, you can keep going back to it. So if you need a break, say you've been working on, there you go, there's my please like and subscribe sticker. If, um, if you're sort of unsure about a painting, whether it's finished or not, what I do is I pop it on my easel and then walk away and come back to it maybe the next day maybe a couple of days or even longer and have another look at it and nine times out of ten if it's something you've been sitting on and looking at and painting on for a, a long time you sort of get a bit blind to what's actually happening and what you can see and what you can't see and if you leave it and walk away and then come back even if it's just for a coffee break, you can sometimes see things that you hadn't seen before, especially viewing from a distance. What I do during paintings, during drawings, I'm constantly taking photographs on my phone and looking at the image on a smaller screen, things that are obvious definitely jump out to you. Obviously, you don't want to get to this point and then realize you've made a mistake in the initial drawing. That's something that needs to be sorted out 
right at the beginning. If there's any mistakes in a drawing, uh, composition wise, um, or even the basic structure of something that needs to be sorted out before you start painting. Don't think you're going to be able to amend something later on in a painting uh, that is a structural problem. That would be far more difficult. Um, i.e. if one of the eyes was too low down. I mean, you could go in and, and alter that, but it's a huge step once you've started painting, especially once you've started applying colour. So building up just a little bit of texture there. And this is a backwards and forwards process um, that could go on forever, but at some point you've got to call a painting done. So building up with the uh, unbleached titanium white again, and that will be glazed over again. The glazes that I'm using, I don't use any glazing mediums, I just use water. The paints, Liquitex Basic paints are translucent enough that just a, a little bit of water added to them uh, is enough to make them flow to be able to glaze with. There you can see them in the palette um, to the right. <clears throat> I'm going to have to attempt, I think, to get a splurge and get another camera that will go over the palette because I have had a few people asking for that. I never use um, a colour straight out of the tube except the unbleached titanium white. Everything else is a mixture. I don't like to see paintings, oh, I'm saying 96, 97% of the time where the paint's been used directly from the tube. The colours can look so false. If you're unsure of colour mixing and you don't know where to begin, it's just trial and error and it's practice it's knowing what colors work together and what colors don't work together um, and it's knowing your blacks as well ivory black um, mars black all different blacks some have a cool tone to them some have a warm tone to them and it's really getting used to your to your colors i very very rarely use black i like to mix my own black but if i do go to use a black then I make sure it's the black that I need whether it's warm tone or cool tone. If you'd like any colour mixing videos then just pop a comment in uh, below and I can do that as well adding on to my to-do list. So just glazing out now into towards the bottom part of the painting And if, if any of the glazes go on too thickly and I end up covering up the detail underneath, it won't completely cover up the detail because it is a glaze. It will soften the look, it will soften the contrast of the detail underneath. And once it's dry, which as I said, a couple of minutes with a hairdryer can then go back on with the unbleached titanium white and add in more detail if I need to. <coughs> Excuse me, and that is something that I do constantly during the creation of an acrylic painting. Backwards and forwards, detail, glazing on top, adding more detail, and glazing on top, etc. And every time you glaze, you, you don't have to be glazing the same colour. You can glaze a lot of different colours into a very small area to, to give it um, depth and add to the realism because animals aren't one solid colour although it does look like it here as I'm turning the board round I'm propping it back up so that glaze going over there I knew I would be going in and adding different colour glazing to that area later on so you can build glaze on top of another glaze. You don't have to add a glaze, then detail, and then glaze. You can add glaze, dry it, and then add another glaze on top to darken certain areas. Obviously, if you want to lighten an area, 
you're then going to have to go in with a more opaque colour and that's when I reach for the unbleached titanium white and then glaze on top of that once it's dry. If you've got any questions, if I'm not covering everything um, and I'm missing a certain answer that you're looking for, just drop your question in the comments below and I'll, I'll get back to you and try to help. At one point, um, <laughs> it, it was quite cold in the uh, studio the day I was working on this area and uh, I dragged the sleeve of my um, jacket through the paint. It's like, so I've now got a jacket with acrylic paint up the sleeve, but that's fine. <laughs> I, I never dress for the best, yeah, never dress to impress if you're working in a studio because no doubt you'll just end up covered in paint. I'm normally a, quite a clean worker, but uh, yeah, I was listening to a podcast, I think, and uh, forgot where my sleeve was, but hey-ho. I use cheap brushes. Let's get uh, onto the subject of brushes. These are, these blue ones, they're by, oh, they're called Crafters Companions, and they're the cheapest of cheap brushes. They're um, just showing you there that the first glaze is, is on. So I just swiveled the camera around so you could actually see everything glazed apart from the nose. So everything's got first coat of glaze on. So it looks flat. Yeah, there's no two ways about it. When it's just got one coat of a glaze on, it looks pretty flat. So now I start going in now and building up second layer of detail that will be glazed on top of as well <clears throat> so yeah the brushes uh, Lang Royal and Langnickel I think they're by the ones that are blue where you can see like the textured area to, to grip to they're really cheap you can get a pack of those for six pounds five pounds six pounds there the bristles are golden tacklon which is an, a nylon bristle and i've had them years and they're brilliant yeah and the little blue one to the side in between the the two crafters companions i don't know what that is that's just a a cheapy cheap cheap probably from somewhere like the range or wilkinson's or somewhere like that and the one I'm holding is Art Studio and I, you can get a massive pack of those brushes I think from the range for about six or seven pound as well so when it comes to acrylic painting and oil painting I don't spend much on brushes and they last years literally years when it comes to painting in watercolour I'm a little bit more fussy about my brushes but I still don't pay astronomical prices once you get to know your tools the more you play with your materials whether that's paints or pencils um, or brushes anything the more and paper the more you play with your materials the more you you'll find out what can be achieved um, by using them what techniques they like what techniques they don't like um, and then you just bend your materials to suit your needs I was dabbing the um, acrylic paint then with my finger just to soften the look even though it's going to be glazed over so not going in with the pure unbleached titanium white now for detailing but with um, something a little bit of a softer look anything that you put on you can glaze over so if you put something on and you're not quick enough to remove it uh, before it dries you can glaze over it and disguise it, it's not a problem. If you're really quick, if I put some paint on and I don't want it there, I quickly dip my brush in clean water, dab it onto where I've just added the paint, applied the paint, and get a tissue and dab it back off. And because the layer underneath is dry, and, and believe me, when acrylic paint is dry, it's not going anywhere, the layer that you've just applied can be just washed off. I know a lot of people don't like using acrylics because they dry so quick, but for me that's 
that's one of the draws of working with acrylics is um, they dry so quick. Okay, so here I'm going on with the unbleached titanium white and beginning to add some detail here. I don't want I don't want to cover it all with this um, detail, but I do want these to be glazed as highlights where the sun ju would just be hitting them. Because I've done all that work underneath and I don't want to cover all of that up, but I do want some hairs to be standing, not proud, but um, more visible. And when the painting is finished, there's no physical texture at all. It's all visual texture. Some people like to paint with palette knives and use their acrylics nice and thick, but that's not how I work. Oh, the hair, the hair getting in the way again. And the chin, um, the hairs on the chin has just been worked exactly the same so just building up layer after layer I don't I didn't count how many layers um, I did it was just a lot but it's it's thoroughly enjoyable if there's any subjects that you'd like me to paint or draw or any mediums that you'd like me to work with just let me know in the comments below as I said I work in all different mediums so graphite ink oil acrylic colored pencil uh, pastel so oil pastel so many things so and it's nice um, the reason I enjoy working with different mediums is it stops me getting bored and I can honestly say I, I hardly ever get art block and I think it's because I work with um, different mediums and I switch between them. So I work a few paintings in one medium and then I'll switch to another medium or I'll have different mediums on different paintings going at the same time so I can switch between them just depends what I have in the studio at the time but it's um, it's really nice now where my arms resting at the minute as soon as I move my arm you'll see a little blob of paint on the canvas and that's come off my sleeve it's dried there so um, it's not being moved around and I just work over that and glaze over it and it just becomes part of the painting which is fine I didn't realise I'd done it until it was dry. Dabbing in with the uh, my finger again just to soften it. And what ends up as being too harsh is just glazed over a few more times to soften the look of the look of it in any one place. The nose was worked just the same. Obviously, the nose in this clip just here isn't finished. I had put an initial um, layer on and I just come back to that later and add a few more glazes with different colours just to make it look more realistic. I didn't film putting the whiskers in because literally my head was over the canvas you've got to have a steady hand and you only get one go at it and obviously with it being acrylic and it dries very quick once that whiskers in it's there to stay so um, when I do uh, another larger acrylic painting if there's whiskers or anything I'll be standing up at the easel and I'll be able to film that more easily but my camera is overhead pointing down and I just needed my head in front of the uh, canvas to get the whiskers on but you load up your brush with a lot of pigment and quite a bit of water but not too much when you're doing whiskers and you just want to do one whisker in one stroke I must admit these round brushes the one I'm using now does hold quite a lot of pigment um, 
so I'm able to get quite a lot of work without going backwards and forwards to the paint which is nice but as again as I said you know it's um, using your materials and finding out what they can do for you and as you can see I'm just using well four brushes but most of the work could have been done with two so you don't need a lot of materials if you're unsure about acrylics just buy black and white a tube of black a tube of white and just have a play and you get some really nice effects and then maybe if you're happy with the cut the black and white work you're you're doing then maybe buy a couple of colors and you can try glazing and things like that and then if it's something you think you're going to enjoy then you can start buying more colours and adding to your supplies. And if it's just something for practice, then you don't need to work on canvas even, you can work on paper, you can work on cardboard, you can work on anything, you know, to have a play. I do sometimes work acrylics on paper and if I'm going to do that then I will um, put a layer of gesso on the paper first and obviously working gesso on paper I thin the gesso down with a little bit of water and then it won't need sanding down it will be smooth. So this looks really harsh at the minute and it's just looking harsh because there isn't a glaze on it yet. It all softens down and goes back into the painting once the glazes are being added. And you can either add a, a large glaze which will glaze everything, the, these little strokes and everything underneath it, or you can add very fine glazes with a, the tip of the brush just to certain areas and in one hair you could have multiple glazes doing it that way <clears throat> excuse me I'm probably mixing paint right now so I hadn't picked up on that during the editing so sorry about that but I am back in okay so adding some more highlights and you can see the nose there as all these um, different glazes on now and there's a lot more glazing to go on on the main as well so it's had an initial glaze all that work that you've just seen me do on the main underneath his chin and around his neck area that's had an initial glaze but I do come back and there's many more glazes that go into that before you get to the finished painting the top right hand corner but I just wanted to show you real time how slow this actually is just in case you think you can get a painting done in a night I mean some people probably can but uh, that's not me at all so this is real time and some of this will be glazed over as well Just watching the directions and the lengths. That's one thing to remember when working on any animal portrait is uh, hair length or feather length, direction and width. And where the hairs are very short, sometimes you're just seeing the very tip of them depending on the direction you're actually looking at the animal and a quick glance at my messy work surface and the finished painting thank you so much if you've made it this far if you have any questions please pop it in the comments below please like and subscribe if you haven't already and yeah i hope you have fun with your acrylics and look forward to hearing all about what you're working on at the moment so that's it for me for now take care and i'll see you all soon bye bye